Welcome back. It's always an exciting day for me when Elementary OS brings out a new release. So Elementary OS 7 is now among us and it has been quite a while since we have had a substantial update from Elementary. So if you're not familiar, Elementary OS is a Ubuntu based distribution that has its own custom desktop called the Pantheon desktop. You can indeed run the Pantheon desktop on other distros. And, uh, and interestingly enough, there are plenty of other distros that use the Pantheon desktop now. However, it always feels first place in Elementary because of the fact it's where it's come from. So this video is going to be about looking at some of the new features, but also, and probably more importantly, I want to kind of tell a bit of a story, at least from my observations from the outside, looking in at a project that I've always held in a very special place in my heart. But at the same time, I can't help but wonder what is the cost of idealism? At the end of the day, this project to me represents some of the best ideas that have come into desktop Linux in the last decade easily. Elementary OS as a project has been around for some time. It started as an icon pack and then morphed into a few other things and then finally became its own desktop and its own OS. It had its own goals and now it is a sort of a desktop rolling release, but the core of the desktop as in the operating system itself doesn't roll at all. And that gives this one wonderful balance of new features and bug fixes being addressed on the desktop end while the OS stays the same, which makes it a lot easier for supporting large amounts of hardware because at the end of the day, it's based on an Ubuntu LTS release, which albeit is getting a little old, the hardware enablement that the Ubuntu team do definitely benefits elementary. So here's my thoughts. And you can kind of, if you don't watch the rest of the video and you're not interested in any of the new features, then here's my kind of hot take on the matter. I would say that if elementary OS had the momentum and the funding that it did around the elementary OS five and continued that upward and onward, I would say the elementary project would have all of the features and all of the functionality built into it that many of its users desire. However, over that time, the elementary OS uh, and the development cycle around it has always been kind of limited to its ideals. And while the elementary team have been committed to upholding ideals and very respectable ideals to build an open source privacy respecting alternative to Mac OS and Windows, I think some of their choices have inevitably led to a place where they might not have the funding user base and or momentum to make all of everyone's dreams come true. That's where I kind of land with a project like elementary OS seven. What I want to do is apart from summarizing new features, I want to kind of pull on that thread. Elementary OS has so many ideals going for it. And yet I can't help but feel that the strength of those ideals has also created a bit of a slow burner progress when it comes to the development of this OS, because at the end of the day, it's all about the money. Now, don't mean that as a dig at any, anyone on the elementary team, because it's just the reality that making an open source desktop is expensive and it requires time and time is money. So when we heard the news in late in 2021 and early into 2022 in elementary OS's design cycle that the team was having to downsize who was on salary and all that kind of thing, it did lead me to wonder, I wonder what kind of impact this is going to have on the features that get added to this OS moving forward. The good news is, is that many of the features that so many of us wanted, for example, a more robust app center, all of that stuff is here. Like the app center looks amazing and is one of the best app center experiences you can have on a Linux desktop. The only difference is, is that the functionality of GNOME software and even Discover is just that bit better. So while we get a better user experience and a better user interface, I would argue uh, some of the features here, some of the core functionality is missing compared to GNOME software and KDE Discover. I wish we could marry the functionality of those with a design sense that the elementary team have, uh, because that would just be amazing. Or I'd love to see this 
like it was used in Pop! OS, be able to roll out across other distributions and other distributions be able to benefit from the amazing work that goes on here. Because not only do we have more details now when it comes to uh, clicking on a particular app, it doesn't matter where that app comes from, you get these wonderful screenshots padded within a, uh, within a colorful sort of tile and that will scale really nicely no matter what size display you have. You get the bare essentials in terms of what the app is doing and you get a great list of updates so you get a really clear picture as to whether this app is up to date or not and how much work is being done on it. Now again there's also those really quick links uh, at the bottom for the uh, developer and you can also fund the app and uh, you can see what licensing it has and share it and all that good stuff. Um, but again, it'd be great to see these sort of funding models be applied to all of these apps through the App Center uh, and not just the ones that are custom built for elementary. Again, this comes back to a funding issue. I know there was a big push back in, I think it was 2019 for the App Center uh, to be able to become a standardized platform for people to be able to publish apps on Flathub, Flatpak, etc. And while Flatpak and the App Center are very closely integrated, not all the features and all the intentions have been realized from uh, some of the dreams that they have for the App Center. And again, it just comes down to time and money to develop these things. So some of the, some of the pain points that have uh, kept many users from using elementary. Uh, things like, for example, single click on uh, files in the file system. So when you're browsing around, you now have a simple check mark where you can uh, now double click to navigate through uh, files and folders, which is fantastic. One of the other pain points for this OS in the past was knowing where exactly to put uh, bug fix requests or feedback. And so they've created a custom app to be able to sort of triage those more effectively. And it steps you through the process of doing a high quality bug report in a way that isn't technical, it isn't hard to get over. It is a very streamlined process and well designed. A lot of the beautiful trackpad gestures that have been on elementary OS continue to shine through here. And when it comes to switching between workspaces, when it comes to uh, even scrolling between panes in the app center, the trackpad gestures remain second to none in the Linux world. The fact that you can uh, jump into a panel here and then swipe back with two fingers and it's mapped one to one so you can kind of bounce back and forth. This is fantastic stuff that I wish was adopted all over the shop. And to do all this, it is still running on an antiquated display server, uh, which is 100% functional and it does the job. But as more distributions move to Wayland and that becomes kind of the default that is being actively developed, there's definitely going to be room for elementary OS to make the jump as well. And while I think that might be happening in the background, uh, it is just worth mentioning that as a modern desktop with very modern features uh, in the user space, it would definitely benefit from being able to uh, run on the latest display server stack. The new user onboarding and the kind of the welcome app, the setup process is also really nice, really well polished. Again, the, I can't emphasize the, the combined effect of great fonts, great icons, and a theme that gets out of the way enough that it doesn't seem gaudy or overly trendy or trying to keep up with what other desktops are doing. Uh, so these are all good things. At the same time, when you start scratching a bit below the surface, and especially in some of the default apps, while the settings pane, the file explorer, some of the core applications are rock solid, I have run into bugs and issues that will probably need to be ironed out over the coming months. And while, again, this is something that I would normally excuse, um, at the same time, this distribution is usually released on a when it's ready basis, which means that they don't usually pull the trigger on these things until they're pretty happy with how the, uh, the OS is feeling overall. And the amount of system crashes that I've had, I think triggered by the App Center and maybe a weird dance between my graphics card, uh, being an NVIDIA card, of course, and, uh, and the App Center has caused my system to lock up entirely several times. And while I'm hopeful that those bug fixes will come and those changes will land in the App Center over time, there's even an option here where you can jump in and enable app updates automatically, not system updates, just app updates. Uh, it is hopeful 
that these will get ironed out. But at the same time, it's kind of like, man, I wish they weren't there to begin with because these sort of things do uh, create a unstable uh, first impression. And that's not something that you want to do, especially when a system like this one is going to be around for the next little while. On the technical front though, it is great to see that more and more of the applications are being ported over to GTK4, and that bodes well for eventually supporting Wayland as well. A lot of the apps that have been ported over to GTK4 scale really nicely and utilize the GPU well, but this process isn't entirely complete, so not all of the built-in applications that are native on elementary uh, have made it there yet. Let's take a little moment to talk just about how the system settings, in my mind, really nails the simplicity and it's so much easier to find what you're looking for in elementary system settings than literally any other system settings out there and that includes proprietary systems as well something about the layout the iconography and uh and just how much padding there is in between them leads to just a very stress-free experience and it makes it so much easier to find it's also really nice that they've added power profiles now that you can uh, utilize in uh, on laptops and it's also nice that as these settings panels have been more and more built out over time, the amount of options that get built into the Pantheon desktop also seem to grow. And customization on elementary has not always been the easiest thing. And you still can't have system tray icons because basically it's an idea that the elementary team have that you don't need system tray icons. They shouldn't be there. They should only be there for persistent things that you need to change like volume, your Wi-Fi settings, uh, battery settings and so forth and so on. So, and to that, I would say, yeah, fair enough. If you're willing to get on board with that, you can go ahead with that. There are ways of course to do it, but those gripes, I guess, against if you don't agree with the design philosophy behind elementary OS, you still won't be able to morph this thing into whatever you want, but the sandbox is being widened in terms of what you can change. So apart from the appearance in the light and dark theme, you can, you can utilize the text scaling to bring up the size of the overall UI. And what I would suggest is that they've actually done a really good job in creating a UI that scales well with the text. You're not limited by having tiny little button controls to try and hit and then the text being huge. Everything still looks like it's got a decent amount of padding around it. The dock is also relatively customizable to a point and multitasking with the hot corners is actually pretty powerful because you can actually execute a custom command and associate that with one of the hot corners as you go along. It's also worth mentioning that when it comes to uh, the keyboard and the keyboard layout, keyboard shortcuts, accessing all of this stuff is very, very intuitive and straightforward. And I appreciate the fact that they give each user access or, or quick access to a keyboard shortcuts uh, panel to help learn the keyboard navigations of this desktop. This is not something new, it's been around for a while, but it's worth, just worth shouting out. Finally, on the app front, the web browser, I would say has been much improved and this is much more owing to the improvements that uh, Gnome Web or Epiphany has made to the browser on the back end and the ability for this web browser to add uh, web services and web apps to the dock and, uh, and run it within sort of a stripped down version is, uh, is always welcome as more and more of our workflows revolve around web services. Also, while the mail client is uh, something that I would love to be able to utilize more, my particular email settings uh, for Outlook uh, as a personal Outlook account, they just don't seem to authenticate through. So again, it's one of those things that I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's something to do with the OAuth2 authentication standard on Microsoft's front that keeps messing with the evolution um, backend of this particular app. But uh, yeah, I'd love to be able to use this mail client, but I just haven't been able to get it to connect like at all, no matter what I try. So again, opportunity for me to report a bug through the feedback app. Uh, and that is what it is. But all of this kind of ties together and here's where I'll kind of land this for now. Elementary OS, in my mind, is one of the most idealistic uh, Linux distributions out there in that it has a compelling vision for a product to be able to replace Windows and Mac and it has one of the most thoughtful UI UX design uh, combinations. The core of the OS is stellar and some of the touches that they have put into it are second to none in the Linux world. But also some of those ideals that drive the excellence in corners of this project also are its main limiting factor. For example, a key decision was made to, uh, to be able to very 
easily and streamline pay what you can for not only the OS itself, but also for the apps. Now, while some people threw a bit of a hissy fit about this in the long run, it was a great thing for the project because it gave people the opportunity and just removed the friction from people donating to a project that they enjoyed. And many people utilize this. However, as the team scaled up based on this funding, it also meant that that funding could disappear just as quickly. Uh, and without coming up with a weird subscription model or advertising revenue or any of the more scummy uh, business practices that have to come from uh, keeping a distribution up and running, without funding, you can't have consistent development. And I think this has been one of the things that has hampered the, the visions of glory that we all had for elementary OS uh, maybe a couple of years back. And while the progress continues to be iterative and it continues to be a great quality product in the elementary space, there are just so many things that are piling up now as uh, technical leaps that need to be made. And there are also things that are piling up that are just features on the wish list that people would love to see, but without the development funding and time available, at the end of the day, this is just another distribution that can be just as quickly discarded as it can be downloaded and installed for free. So hopefully, if you like this project, definitely go and throw it some bucks and spread the word around. Um, at the same time, I always think and come back to Linux Mint as a great example of a project that somehow has managed to create a well-established donation base for their product and their users are donating anywhere between 10 and 15 grand a month to keep this dis to keep Linux Mint as a project ticking along. So in my mind, Elementary OS and Linux Mint are very closely linked. They're both based on Ubuntu LTS models. They both have a clear vision for what they want from their desktop. The difference is, is that Linux Mint seems to have the funding model figured out, whereas Elementary OS, at least from what I can tell and from what I've been hearing in podcast interviews and the rest of it, just doesn't quite have that scalability yet. With that scalability might come more features and uh, and enhancements along the way. So yeah, elementary OS 7, is it enough to be my daily? Not so much because the polish doesn't account for the extra functionality that I need from the desktop. And maybe I need to break that down in a future video. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.